Welcome back to the show. We have uh, quite a show for you tonight. Uh, comedian Richard Lewis will be joining us. Uh, Nightcap Theater installment number six, another film from my uh, dog, Bob, and also uh, our first installment of Dave's Hobby Shop. Now, you TV historians may want to tune in for this because I just have a feeling it's going to be a limited edition. <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of a keepsake for you here tonight. Uh, you'll, be, you'll be sorry you missed this one. There... No home television. It's a Don King classic. You can only see it in theaters. Now, where was I? Uh, my first guest tonight has been called the great white father of blues, a legend in the music world, and a man who has influenced hundreds of musicians since he hit the scene in the 50s, as they say when you hit the scene in the 50s. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Wayne Cochran. <laughs> Uh, thank you for being here. It must be a thrill for you to be here for Dave's Hobby Shop. And, uh, uh, very... You know what? That picture of you... Yeah. <laughs> looked just like Muncie, Indiana. Oh, no, no. It didn't, uh, didn't look that... Well, I don't want to say that. Middletown, no. USA. Yeah, Middletown. You spent some time there. One of, the <laughs> one of the first clubs you wrecked was in Muncie, Indiana, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, now, why did you do that? Why did you go into a town and turn a guy's club over? What was the point of well, that? Well, I don't know. I just always believed to... If you get an urge, back then I did, to do it. Mm -hmm. And I was out in the audience, it was on a Saturday night, and the crowd was really cooking. And I looked up and there was a plate glass wonder all the way across the front of the building. And immediately I thought of Randolph Scott. Uh 
<laughs> Did you, you really? You ever th think about what it felt like to pick up a, a bar stool and just go through the window? <laughs> and I did it, but it was really strange because the crowd was so noisy, the band was really loud. And when the chair went through the window and it broke, there was no noise. It was like almost slow motion because mm -hmm. you couldn't hear the glass. It mm -hmm. went. <laughs> and the chair went right through the window, right down the little hill, across the street, and into a Corvette. <laughs> now this this became part of the act pretty much. You went from town to town uh, uh, wrecking clubs, right? Yeah, I got paid for it. No kidding. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh, what were some of the other clubs? Well, <laughs> before we get into other clubs that uh, you have wrecked, maybe we can uh, stir up some old lawsuits. As a matter of fact, hey! Uh, no, we're not going to do that. But we are going to pause here, and uh, we'll be back for more of uh, Wayne Cochran and, of course, Dave's hobby club. Back to the show, the gentleman is, of course, uh, Wayne Cochran. You influenced a many, many uh, huge music stars, uh, Mick Jagger, and of course, uh, the Blues Brothers used a lot of your style and influence. How do you feel about that? Uh, do you resent their overwhelming success, or do you? Uh... Well, no, I did. Uh, I did it one time, but right now I wouldn't. I wouldn't swap places with anybody in the world. Yeah. I'm in the greatest position of life I've ever been in my life. I've been born again. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I got a ministry. Uh, my wife's back with me. My kids are back with me. I have anything in the world I need besides eternal life. Yeah. So uh, I don't know of anybody past, present, or future that I'd trade places with. I'm but, ecstatic. And I'm just glad that, uh, that I did something that somebody else thought was creative. I wish now that I could influence them into what I know. Now, if, if, you, if you wanted to, you could probably go back uh, entertaining full-time and be a huge star all over again, couldn't you? You, you get that feeling? Well, I don't know. I've been offered some really good contracts. But see, I, I've been called into a ministry. I, I, I go around now. In fact, I was in Lubbock, Texas last night at Brother Carl Koch's church. Uh, I'm going to Vegas when I leave here. In fact, I've got to be on a plane at 7.20 tonight. We're having a revival out there. We're expecting about 30,000 people in one week. Some of the biggest stars in the world is born again. Some of the biggest ministers and teachers. And uh, that's the reason I enjoy coming here. I don't get to sing that much anymore. Uh -huh. I do mostly Bible teaching and preaching. And we see some incredible miracles. I mean, people heal, come out of, of wheelchairs, things like that. Let me ask you about uh, um, the working with the Blues Brothers. What exactly, did you work with those guys, or how did you? No. Uh, did you ever meet uh, Belushi and Ackroyd? Yeah, I did. I, went, I, I flew out to L.A. when they did the, the last live album, uh, Paul and him, and I was there with them. And I had a great time. It was a great week. And John Belushi was just, uh, he was warm, he, he was sweet, mm -hmm. he was friendly. He was like a little teddy bear. He yeah. bounced around, you know, and he, just, he was just as nice to me as you could be to anybody. Did you get up on stage with those guys when they were doing the show? Yeah, they got me up on stage. I enjoyed that. Yeah. And uh, what about their singing? How did, how did they uh, handle the blues? I, I thought that... Uh, I heard some people say, you know, this, that, the other band's good, but they can't sing that good. But let me tell you something. Accord didn't really try to sing. He played a good harmonica. But John Bellucci sang great. Yeah. You consider the fact he didn't sing that much. You give him another two, three, four years, but he had some good phrasing. And he had, he had rasp in his voice. He sung basically Is that too. important to have a little rasp in your voice? Well, yeah. You know, you got to sound like you're hurting a little. <laughs> now, how, how, do you, <laughs> how do you get the, the rasp? Uh, is that from hurting a little? Well, yeah, I used to tell... <laughs> from hurting a lot, I used to tell people to just tie yourself behind a donkey, let him drag you for about six months across the desert. When you stand up, you can sing the blues. Uh -huh. But it's from vocal abuse. It's Vo from strain. Vocal, vocal abuse. It's from strain. I've had two operations. Gee, many. From my throat. Yeah. But it don't bother me now. I feel great. Let me ask you, last time you were here, we discussed your hair, which people, uh, if, if they didn't see you in the old days, uh, may not know what we're talking about, but we have, uh, and I know you'd be pleased with this, uh, I certainly would be, we have uh, photographic documentation of the way the man looked. What year do you suppose this was, Wayne? Oh, that's probably around 1967. Yeah. He's weird, isn't he? Now, that's, that's peculiar looking hair even, even then, because I remember, as, as I mentioned last time, seeing you in Muncie and thinking to myself, man. well... There's something, uh, something going on here that we don't know about. Um, I had fun. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, never, uh, I never liked for attention. Yeah. And I never had no problem with getting bored. All I had to do was put on some lilac outfit with a deep purple velvet cape and do my hair up, tint it lilac, and go to some truck stop on Saturday night. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a lot of action. Yeah, that'll give you that rasp in the voice, too, after... <laughs> 
a couple of the visits to truck stops. It's called survival. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, how did you, uh, first of all, uh, why did you do it, uh, your hair like that? Because, now, what, you keep looking at your watch. Because we rehearsed a great sun, right, Paul? And I didn't get to do it last time. I want to do another song. Come on, America, rise up. I mean, these are great musicians. We rehearsed for an hour and a half. We got a great song. These people will be blessed. I mean, think about your audience, man. Consider the people. Well, let me, I mean, why do they want to hear about a guy who looks that weird? I mean, look at me now. Let me, let me explain it to you this way, Wayne. Uh, we have time left either for a song or for another visit to Dave's hobby shop. So. <laughs> I'm Lord Jesus, I pray that you give this man wisdom and that the song will be delivered. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, the way, the way I understand it, he either sings or I go to hell for the rest of <laughs> I'm burning in hell for eternity. Praise and... God. Going uh, back to Muncie. Suddenly, it's the uh, PTL club here, isn't it? Uh, they'll, they'll be in Vegas, though. But Jim Baker and Tammy, bless her heart. They're going to be there with us. We're going to be on satellite for six days and nights, proclaiming the gospel and singing and praising the Lord. Now, Las Vegas is a, a, a well-known... You're trying to talk me out of my song. No, 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 no. But uh, it's, it's a well-known uh, uh, sin, sinful, awful place Las Vegas is. <laughs> Wayne? Well... <laughs> the Bible says, wherever sin abounds, grace abounds to much more. Uh -huh. So if you want the grace of God, go so you, where sin abounds, because God's ready to do away with it. So you're going to have 30,000 reborn Christians there. Uh, now, will you be playing blackjack? <laughs> Look, you know, the only people that gamble is people don't have nothing going. I got a sure thing. Why should yeah. I gamble? Yeah, well, it's, it's now, now tell me what's going on here. We have, we don't have time. Okay. We got three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> let me, well, let me. Pause. You did it to me last time. Last time I didn't did to do a gospel song. That's it. Right in protest. Take it off the air. <laughs> Unless. Take it off. Did you say take it off the air? You did. Yeah. Oh, Wayne. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, Wayne. All right. I like your show. Let him stay on a while longer. Uh, a while longer. Now we're going to pause here, and uh, uh, we'll see what happens when we return. Uh, unless Wayne has his way, and in case we won't be returning. Reminding you that when you're looking to ride a bus, why not look for a Melman bus? Say goodbye to bus slag. Ride Melman. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Richard Lewis will be out a little bit later, a film from uh, My Dog Bob. And uh, we twisted Wayne Cochran's arm. And... <laughs> he was kind enough to sing another song for us. And, uh, but he has to be out of here by 7, so we're going to pretty quickly here. We're not going to get into it, so... Uh... And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Wayne Cochran singing Jump... No pews? Yes. Wayne Cochran, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Latimer for president! You don't have to jump no pews, run down no aisle, no chills run down your spine. But you'll know that you've been Born again yeah. You know my hands didn't shake The earth didn't quake No stars fell from the sky But I know, I know That I'd been Born again An emotional feeling of faith in God's word and believing. Confess. 
confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and just believe in your heart that God raised them from the dead and the Bible says you shall Sing that one night, but they said no. <laughs> Let Wayne do it, and so we decided we would. And uh, tidy up some paperwork here. Okay. <clears throat> Wayne Cochran, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this program, 